Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. I'm so happy to meet you again in this very important project, a difference between cytokine storm and secondary bacterial pneumonia in COVID-19 patient. Uh, suppose you admit a patient in non-breathing mask in your ICU or in the hospital, and a couple of days later, the patient condition deteriorated with severe hypoxia and connected to mechanical ventilation, and the patient deteriorate a lot. In this time frame, you need to differentiate between a worsening of the COVID-19 pneumonia by cytokine storm, which usually occur at the day eight and beyond, or is it a secondary bacterial infection from presence in ICU or in the hospital? It's very important questions and very tricky point. We will go step-by-step step approach to help resolve this issue. The prevalence of laboratory confirmed bacterial super infection in critically ill COVID-19 patients in ICU could be around 14% according to recent data analysis. It's not rare. A recent observational court study of 78 critically ill patient, COVID patient, uh, revealed that almost 25% at 15 days after ICU admission has blood stream infection. And this great article in the clinical microbiology and infection, it is clear, clearly revealed that co-infection, initial co-infection with COVID-19 patient was 3.5% of the patient. But bacterial secondary infection was identified as 14.3%. And there's other study here revealing low prevalence of super infection at hospital admission uh, in COVID-19 patients. So you have almost 15% of secondary bacterial infection in your patient in ICU. This is because the patient has leukopenia and he, is, he, he will receive steroid and he will be on mechanical ventilation with a lot of invasive catheter. This all enhances the secondary bacterial infection in your patient, causing this confusion, confusion between cytokine storm and secondary bacterial infection. Attention, please. Really, it is very tricky to differentiate between the complicated secondary bacterial infection and the worse in COVID-19 pneumonia due to cytokine storm. Unfortunately, both occur at the same time frame. Moreover, both has almost the same clinical picture, which are fever, worsening dyspnea, hypoxia, increased ventilator sitting, ventilatory sitting, as well as multiple organ dysfunction and hypotension in severe cases. It, it both share, it, it share also a lot of biochemistry and hematological findings, such as leukocytosis, renal environment, deranged liver function test, and increased fatty marker. So this is the importance of our project because it is really a very difficult and important and a tricky issue. In SARS-CoV-2 -CoV infection, SARS the co -co virus infection, corona. In SARS coronavirus infection, ARDS is the ultimate result of cytokine storm. In this scenario, release of immune effector sets of large amount of pro-inflammatory cytokines, inter interferon alpha, gamma, interleukin 1, 6, 12, a lot of chemokines and cytokines will precipitate and sustain a parent systemic inflammatory response. And this cytokine storm is readily followed by immune system attacking of the body, which in turn will cause ARDS and the multiple organ failure, the final result being this, at least in most severe cases. And in this diagram in Frontier in Immunology, the SARS-CoV-2 will attack the epithelial cells heal, here pneumocytes two cells, and will stimulate the immune uh, cells here, macrophage triggers, will, trigger, will activate T cell, macrophage, and neutrophil, all of these inflammatory cells in the lung and the alveoli will release a lot of cytokines, which will lead to multiple organ dysfunction, lung, gastrointestinal, brain, cardiovascular, liver, kidney, microbe circulation. And this is exactly the way of severe sepsis and septic shock. And this is a difficulty. Okay.
So what is the difference? What is our protocol in this regard? There is difference. Really, there is very important difference you should consider in cytokine storm and bacterial infection. Look for this great article in the New England Journal of Medicine about the pulmonary vascular endotheliitis thrombosis in COVID-19. In this study, they did histopathology of the lung in patient in, 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 uh, in severe cases and the fatal cases of COVID-19, ARDS, and the influenza associated respiratory failure. They found that all cases of the COVID-19 influenza has histopathology of diffuse alveolar damage, but diffuse alveolar damage and the very vascular T cell infiltration. But there was a, a very distinctive vascular feature in patients with COVID-19, which is severe endothelial injury associated with the presence of intracellular virus and disrupted cell membrane. Histological analysis of pulmonary vessels in patients with COVID-19 show widespread thrombosis with microangiopathy. Alveolar capillary microthrombi were nine times as prevalent in patients with COVID as in patients with influenza. It's very important. This is microthrombi. There is pulmonary vessel occlusion. Peripheral small pulmonary vessel occlusion is very important point you should consider in the differential diagnosis between the, the two conditions. In this article also in the Washington State case series, they talk about also microthrombi were observed. And this uh, histopath histological, histopathological feature in uh, invasion with COVID-19, this is a meta-analysis of 45 articles, they mentioned very, uh, very clearly in case of the vessels, there is black formation, fibrinoid necrosis, small vasculature, high line from by in micro vessels, okay? This as well as damage of the alveoli with uh, high intra-alveolar uh, neutrophils, high line membrane formation, focal slapping, the feature of ARDS, but the unique feature for COVID-19 patient is the hypercoagulable state and the pulmonary microcirculation thrombi. Okay. How can you differentiate between worsening COVID-19 pneumonia by cytokine storm and secondary bacterial infection, a million dollar question. Let us see. Step one, simply look at the ETT secretion. You know, in cytokine storm, there is a pulmonary microcirculation obstruction and microinfarction and the hemorrhage. So, please look for the ETT secretion, look for the button. ETT secretion, all, almost all patients with cytokine storm, I saw this bloody secretion in the patient with cytokine storm, but you will see virulent secretion in patients with bacterial infection. This is because increased incidence of pulmonary microthrombi, infarction, and hemorrhage. This is number one. Just when you go to the patient, look to the uh, bottle of uh, ETT secretion and see what's going on. Step two. Look at lung ultrasound. A vascular subpleural consolidation is going with COVID-19, cytokine storm, and the lumen dense vascular consolidation is vasopneumonic bacterial infection. Let us see. This is a vascular subpleural consolidation of the COVID-19 pneumonia. You see subpleural consolidation with shape and this artifact, this blue and red, this is moving artifact of the of the uh, air here, but you see here subpleural consolidation, subpleural consolidation, a vascular subpleural consolidation, a vascular subpleural consolidation, and this is the whole mark of the COVID 19 pneumonia of pulmonary small vessels obstruction due to hypercoagulable state and severe inflammation on cytokine storm. It's very important. This is avascular subpleural consolidation. Avascular subpleural consolidation. But in bacteria, bacterial pneumonia, you will see this two patient has COVID-19, but developed during the course in ICU during the ICU course of the bacterial infection. This was a salmonella bloodstream infection with severe ARDS, and you see here there is dense consolidation and very high vasculatures and the blood flow, pulmonary blood flow 
in the consolidated area of the bacterial infection. And as you see here, when we put a pulsed wave, you see a lot of flow in this pulmonary consolidation, okay? And this other patient with pseudomonas pneumonia, you see a lot of the blood flow here and dilatation of the pulmonary vasculature and a lot of blood flow. If you see the consolidation, please just fire color, you will see a lot of blood in case of bacterial infection. You see here in the American Journal of Radiology, the ground glass appearance, dense P-line and subpleural consolidation and dense P-line, it's a presence almost 90% of cases, but consolidation is very rare in the COVID-19 pneumonia uh, as the initial presentation compared to the bacterial pneumonia, which is consolidation is the hallmark of the bacterial pneumonia, lubar consolidation. You see this patient, you see this patient has severe cytokine store. You see ground glass appearance with dense beeline, confluent beeline, confluent beeline, and subpolar consolidation, subpolar consolidation, dense beeline, and dense beeline here, and acute corpal monal. And despite that, we will not, we we didn't find any consolidation in this patient. Only subpolar consolidation, avascular subpolar consolidation, despite severe cytokine score. You see this another patient with severe cytokine storm, and you see in this segmental branch of the pulmonary artery there is obstruction because of micro of, of thrombi here of the segmental branch and a lot of ground glass appearance and subpleural consolidation, sub subpleural consolidation, avascular, subpleural consolidation, avascular, subpleural consolidation, and despite the severity of the cytokine storm and right side dilatation, acute corporal monal also, we didn't find any consolidation, even with CT, there is no dense consolidation, lumbar consolidation, which is the hallmark of bacterial pneumonia, but not the cytokine storm, which is characterized by ground glass accident, confluent B line, and subpleural avascular consolidation. Sir, follow up lung ultrasound. Please do lung ultrasound on initial presentation to ICU and to follow your patient by lung ultrasound. Uh, if lung ultrasound progresses to consolidation, it progresses to consolidation during ICU course, which associated with worsening of respiratory status after initial improvement, think of secondary bacterial infection. It's very important. If your patient admitted to ICU and received the steroid and the proper treatment to ICU, and the, your patient improved, and after a couple of days, it start to worse with appearance of consolidation. This is very unique for the bacterial infection and secondary bacterial infection. Look for this patient. This patient, when admission, has subpleural consolidation, and after subpleural consolidation, and after initial improvement, he progressed to dense consolidation, as you see here, with uh, air bronchogram and a lot of vessels, a lot of vasculation in the lung, denoting secondary bacterial infection. Also, this patient has initial subpleural consolidation, as you see, avascular subpleural consolidation here, but after that, he progressed to dense consolidation with air bronchogram and a lot of vessel pulmonary flow inside the consolidation, which is the hallmark of second bacterial infection because this air bronchogram and lumbar consolidation is really pseudomonic if secondary of secondary bacterial infection so number one uh, as regard lung ultrasound look for consolidation vascular consolidation going with bacterial pneumonia avascular subpleural consolidation with confluent B line going with uh, covid-19 number two if your patient has initial improvement followed by worsening and appearance of consolidation, this is really a diagnostic for the, the secondary bacterial infection. Step four, if there is pleural effusion, look for pleural effusion. It's very important to differentiate between both uh, disorders. Focal and the small COVID-19, uh, uh, focal and small pleural effusion is characteristic of the COVID-19 pneumonia and the turbid large in bacterial pneumonia. Because 
in COVID-19 pneumonia, there is microinfarction and small infarction. This is small infarction. This is this is small infarction in all the article talking about lung ultrasound in pulmonary infarction. Talk about focal pleural effusion. Focal pleural effusion due to infarction. Let us see this. This is really a characteristic and pathognomonic of the lung infarction due to COVID. You see here, this is wedge-shaped infarction. And you see, there is focal pleural effusion. You see, with inspiration, you see, focal pleural effusion. Look for this focal pleural effusion, subpleural consolidation. Really, all the uh, article talk about uh, pulmonary uh, uh, signs of pulmonary infarction in lung ultrasound talk about this. Wage shaped avascular and the focal pleural which present in almost 50% of cases. Look again for this focal pleural effusion. You see, with breathing, the, it will appear here this focal pleural effusion. This focal pneural effusion. This is the hallmark and the pneumonic for pulmonary infarction. Focal pleural. But if you see this empyema and the too much turbid fluids is going with bacterial infection. You can see pleural effusion also not focal. Pleural effusion, basal pleural effusion is a COVID-19 pneumonia, but really all patients I saw with pleural effusion has a small amount of pleural effusion, not too much like bacterial infection, and it will be turbid because it is pleural effusion of pulmonary infarction. But you expect to see a turbid, but will be a small amount, not large like bacterial, and the focal pleural effusion is the vasopneumonic of the patient with, you see here, I will uh, freeze again. This focal pleural effusion, which appear with breathing, is very important and pathognomonic of the of the COVID-19. Last but not least, and the very important point, and because of that, I put it at the last because it's very important in the diagnosis, and you should do it without delay. Look for syrup creatine, high value is going with cytokine store, but please send the urgent gram stain and the culture sensitivity of the ATT secretion because if you get within a couple of hours a lot of pus cell in the ATT secretion with growth of organism gram negative or gram cocci, you usually with consolidation you are dealing with uh, secondary bacterial infection and you can start the management early to uh, save the life of this critically ill patient and uh, to sum up please to differentiate between the cytokine storm of the COVID-19 pneumonia and the secondary bacterial infection, first look for the ETT secretion. Bloody, it's going with cytokine storm. Virulent, go, going with bacterial infection. Take this uh, ETT secretion without delay and urgently send for gram stain and cultural sensitivity. And look uh, uh, for gram stain after a couple of hours for the pus cell, blink your pus cell in the uh, specimen and the growth of gram, uh, both of gram stain is very important. You can start treatment in this stage uh, as secondary bacterial infection. And second, please look for the consolidation. Subpleural consolidation with a vascular subpleural consolidation without blood, pulmonary blood flow inside and the density line going with cytokine store, but lubar dense consolidation with air brocogram and to a lot of pulmonary blood flow is going with secondary bacterial infections. Number three, please follow your patient. On admission, please check lung ultrasound. If the patient has initial improvement and after that worsening with appearance of dense consolidation, lumbar consolidation with air program, it's probably secondary bacterial infection. And don't uh, forget to see to look for the pleural effusion. It's focal pleural effusion in case of cytokine storm with pulmonary, micro pulmonary infarction, small infarction, peripheral infarction, and it is dirty and large in case of second bacterial infection. And uh, I hope this helps you in managing your patient in proper way. And thank you a lot for your appreciated listening. And you can subscribe to my uh, channel if you feel this is helpful for you and uh, share this uh, project. Uh, to get a lot of people know about that and thank you a lot.